All right, guys, Jeff again here with EDC. Uh, we're going to do a little video today on the newest edition of the Click and Chips. Um, today's is going to be the Avenger style Click and Chip. So when you order it, what you're going to get is the cutout of the holster. You're going to get the reinforcement panel slash tunnel. And then you're going to want to get the appropriate pattern for whatever model you're wanting to make. So this is what it comes with. You order all three pieces. Make sure you get your right pattern. When the patterns come, they'll have legends on them. We don't have the legends on them right now. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out the outer perimeter of your pattern. I pre-cut mine for the sake of the video. So what I did is I got my pattern here. And I got me an extra reinforcement panel to cheat. So what you're going to want to do is... This one here in particular is a Glock 19, it's what we're making. So this fits all the way down to a Glock 17. So we're gonna, just like the other clicking ships, we're gonna line our, pad our pattern up here on our leather. We're gonna take, we're gonna mark what we need to remove. So we get it down to the proper length. Just mark that off. We're gonna come over here, trim it off, make it go away. All right, so now we're down to the appropriate length for our Glock 19, All right? So what comes next? So we're gonna wanna make sure that we bevel and edge this inside toe. It's gonna be very, very important. So what we'll do, we'll just take our beveler, run this across here. If I've ever used a beveler before, there we go. over and do the front All right. and as you guys know I like Sarah Hagel's slicking solution this stuff is wonderful works on veg tan chrome tan oil tan it's just it's great it's not a dye blocker it's a nice edge real quickly so I'm just taking Slick that down real quick. Now, if you want your edge to be a different color than your holster, this is also the time in which you do that. So, say we want a brown holster or something with black edges. We just take and run us a dye pin right over that edge. Even though that slicking solution ain't all the way dry yet, Still takes dye wonderfully. One of the reasons, again, that I like Sarah Hagel's product. So we've got to cut down to the right length. We've got that bottom edge done. So what comes up next is we want to take our reinforcement panel slash tunnel. Okay. We're going to lay it on here. And we need to edge everything that basically is going to be hard to edge once it's attached to the main body of the holster which is from here all the way down and around, all the way up to about right here. Because all of that's gonna be really hard to edge. We don't need to do this up here because we can always sand and edge that along with the rest of the holster. So the way I'll do is just take this here. I can make me a little nick about right here, okay? And just to the inside of this little notch is about where you need to be, so. I'm taking edge this. All right, same thing. A little second solution on it. Slick this down so it looks nice. And you can, the slicking solution of Sarah's, like I said, I, I love it. I use it on just about everything here. And uh, one of the great things is, again, it's not a dye blocker. 
you could put it on a bit more careful using a Q-tip. It does take a bit more time. But again, it's not a die blocker, so it doesn't really hurt much. If you're doing a natural holster or something, you might want to be a little more careful, but... Up next comes attaching this to the main body of your holster. So what you do is you'll go and cut this out of your pattern, right? Cause you're gonna need it, it's very important. So there's a couple steps to this section. So we're gonna take, lay this over top of it, right? We're gonna, this is our stitch line right here, our top stitch line. So what we're gonna do is just make us a mark right here, and right here. So what that is is a visual aid because I'm going to put glue all over this and down to those stitch lines. And I'm laying the glue on a little heavy. And you will see why here in just a second. So the way I like to do it, instead of trying to map all this out onto that, so I got a little excess glue on there. It's still pretty wet. Very carefully line it up, lay it down, push it down, peel it up. So now we have glue residue all over where glue needs to be. So what we're gonna do now, because I want good adhesion, we're gonna rough it up just a little bit. Being careful to stay inside of where our glue is gonna be. And of course, you guys know here at EDC, Master's Glue is pretty much all that we use. I do like to cut it just a little bit with some Master's Thinner. Helps kind of speed the process up just a little bit. So get that all lined up. Okay, and we're going to tap it out. Make sure we get a good stick. And now, you're gonna to wanna to let this set up, and let your glue dry. We're gonna keep pushing though, just so that we can get all this in one video here. So what comes up next? So what you guys are gonna see on your pattern here, is you slide the blue line up to the red line and trim off the bottom. So when you're laying this piece onto your holster, your stitch line is right here, but this is a tunnel. And so what has to happen is you gotta build that space. So what you're going to do is take and mark on our holster, slide it up under there, make a little dot, slide it up under here, make a little dot for the red line because that's where stitch line's at, okay? And then we're going to make a dot here on the blue, on the outside, all right? So now this gets slid up to that. Right? It's gonna be really important here later on. So it's all marked out. So what comes next is we're gonna put some stitch lines. We're gonna stitch all the way around this and across here. That's again what you have here. So we're just gonna come across, make a couple of dots for a reference. And then we're gonna find a straight edge of any sort. I didn't set up a ruler within reach for this video. So we're gonna use a piece of paper. Good thick piece of cardstock works just fine. Okay. And then 
you're going to want a pair of wing dividers is what we typically use. You're going to make your stitch lines all the way around this edge. Then you're going to stitch it, right? So once you get done stitching, it's going to look like this right here. Okay. So once you've got this piece here and you're stitched and ready to go, this is when those lines come into play, right? So we've got our stitch line. You can also use the bottom of the pattern. I did not grab all the tools I needed for this project at all. So that's our stitch line on the exterior. And again, we're gonna slip up under here Make our mark there and there. Okay. So I like to wet this as I got to kind of fold it, manipulate it, and fight it. So give me just a second here. All right. So I just use a spray bottle. Do it off camera so I don't get everything all wet. But I just, I wet this tunnel real good so that it will fold. And manipulate. So you want to wet it up just a little bit further. Okay. I want to start kind of manipulating this back just a little bit. Okay. And then remember we've got our stitch line on there. All right. So what we'll do is we'll flip this over. We're going to put glue on the back all the way up to the stitch line, which happens to coincide with this curve right here. So it's relatively easy to find without being able to see it on the back side. Then we're just going to take it, we're going to force this up, we're going to lay that line on those marks that we made earlier. And We'll show you what to do with that here in just a sec. All right, we'll give that a minute to set up. Give it a little tap. Okay. So this extra tail you got here, easiest thing to do, slip your pattern over, roll it forward, cut it off flush. If you'd like, you can make it a different shape, change it however you want, just kind of a style preference, whatever your flavor is. So then what we'll do here is once this is all set up, it's a little bit hard to see because it's, it's wet, but our top stitch line is here, right? And we're going to put stitch lines down the side, right? Then it's going to get stitched. So... Swap out a pre-stitched one, okay? It's just cut off flush, and then later on, you'll wet this real good. And you'll slide your belt in there to mold it and shape it, lock it into shape. So, at this point, your reinforcement panel slash tunnel is on. It's good to go. It's where it needs to be. So, what comes next? From here, it's just like any of our other patterns, guys. So, we're going to take our stitch line. Cut it off of our pattern. Set that aside. And again, kind of cheated a little bit for the sake of the video. You're going to lay the ear on here. Line it up. Okay. Mark your stitch line. Right. So you're going to do the same thing on this side. Mark your stitch line. Then if you're going to do slots, this one here is set up for a straight slot. So we have a slot punch that fits this. You guys can use a round punch, punch out each end, and then cut the center out. However you guys like to do your slots. And then same thing over here. 
So once you get from here, everything else is again the same. All right, so we're gonna flip it over. Take, mark it. This is gonna be our glue line. Ditch line and glue line happen to be the same thing. And you can trim this off if you want. It makes your life a little bit easier. So that's our glue line. Take a little bit of glue. Glue it up. All right, one thing I like to do with these tacos before I try to fold them is wet them. I really only need to wet it in the center where I'm about to fold it and bend it. A couple of reasons we're doing this. Um, one, makes things a lot easier. <coughs> rolling wet leather versus rolling dry leather. But really it's a structural thing. When those fibers are wet, they will move versus when they're dry. If you force them too hard, they'll tear. That's why you guys see some cracks and stuff on projects where you've gone to bent things, belt ins, things of that nature. You want to get them good and wet. On the inside, you don't really need to do the whole thing. You just really need to do the center, the back side to do the whole thing so it's cased evenly. That way, if you're doing natural, it dries and looks even and you don't have wet, dark spots, water spots. So, I'm just going to wet this real good. And then now, I'm just going to fold her over. And stick it together. Line our edges up best we can. All right, she's sticking pretty good. Hammer it down. You gotta be real careful hammering this down because it's wet. We don't wanna leave a bunch of divots that we can't get out. Got it hammered down. And guys, from here, it's too easy. Once your glue sets up and your holster dries completely, you wanna let it dry all the way. We're gonna go ahead and sand to make sure that everything matches perfectly. We'll go ahead and stitch it. We got our stitch lines here, we got our slot punches, and then you mold, die, seal, and you're good to go. So that's what they're gonna wind up looking like when you're done. Again, this is gonna be the click and ship Avenger, two pieces, and then make sure you get your appropriate pattern. Jake will put all the links in the video. Hope you all have a great night. All right, guys, just a little added extra, something that's not coming up on the website just yet. It's going to be a couple of weeks. We get uh, get all of our materials lined out and get a couple made and stocked up in inventory um, is exotic reinforcement panels. So this is going to be one of several different exotics. It's laminated over top of some six ounce. It'll come already laminated down. So it doesn't change your process for building at all. Just something that looks a little cool, a little added to your holster. So this one here in particular is shark. I think we've got some gator, maybe some caiman. We'll see what we can come up with. But just a cool little adder that we're going to be rolling out with here in a couple of weeks.